Alright, and we are back. Hello everyone, thank you again for joining us. My name is Jason Levine, and we are greeted again by That's Chic, yes. Rachel Nguyen. How are you, Rachel? Wonderful, thank yeah. you. How are you? I'm, I'm awesome, and I'm super excited for day two, part two. Same here. Not only of your editing journey, but of our ASMR journey. I really am into I think we should do our whole episode like this. There will be many moments of ASMR in this broadcast. I feel like this is the most soothing way to <laughs> Teach someone how to do something. <laughs> uh, ASMR tip number 246.7. Don't have a loud gasp of air laughing when very close to a condenser microphone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, like, blow out everyone's eardrums just, like, <laughs> watching. Sorry about that. Evil Cerise, Kilahu, Chris, Hi, Daniel, Gus. Awesome to see all of you. Ah, <laughs> oh, Chris, you're very kind. So yes, as Gus just mentioned in the chat, uh, we are live, we are interactive. Tell us where you're from, where you're coming from. And uh, hello, Daniel uh, and Renice. We've got people here. We want to uh, you know, ask your questions. Rachel, now you're going to be continuing um, the edit that we were working on from yesterday, yep. which is a new uh, vlog about your journey through Austria. Yep, yes, and, uh, through Austria. Through Austria. And we cut some voiceover together, and we were mm -hmm. playing around with some effects. Um, we kind of went through your process of really reviewing making your selects, adding some temp music to kind of get the vibe yeah. going. And I think what was really interesting too is that once we sort of brought in some of the audio elements, really the sequencing and that oh, was kind of where yeah. you, you could really see your, your craft and kind of like pacing and really telling the story. Yeah, together. it was so much easier once we had like the audio components yeah. that I kind of restarted the sequence because mm -hmm. I thought it'd be easier to show that. Um, like just dropping in like visuals from yeah. that and moving things around. but. Right. Um, let's see. I was also working on like another video too that's just mostly talking. So maybe like we can drop in some oh, yeah. some text in that video. Absolutely, sure, sure. Um, and then maybe like show off like that logo thing that I was working on too. Yes. But maybe that we could do that. We can do that. Too. Yeah, we can do that tomorrow too. And of course, we've got now two hours together. We will take you until five p.m. Pacific time here on AdobeLive.com. So again, thank you. Hey, Frank from Germany, Andre from Brazil. Wow, so international. China, Mexico, Vanessa from Venus, all the way from Venus. Can I can I do like a little Instagram thing right now? You can now? do a big Instagram if you'd like. We. <laughs> I just want everyone to know that it's live. It's live. It is happening right now. It is happening right now. Very nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I see over that here. Was a super zoom. Yeah. Oh, very nice. <laughs> We've got our little uh, fold back monitor here. It is happening right now. Oh gosh. Oh, there it is there with it audio. Is. So um, again, so we're going to be working in Premiere Pro and uh, what's kind of cool is obviously you had the ability to see, you know, sort of started this morning in After Effects, a little bit of Premiere, back to uh, After Effects, some animate talk and uh, here we are in Premiere again. All different styles, all different sort of things being created, but ultimately it's really about like just technique and choice and really telling and crafting stories and kind of showing yeah. your creative process. I definitely feel like it's more um, choice than technique for me. <laughs> I, 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 I'm like, like I said, um, just a little so bit honest, not as yes. technical. But I think you're pretty technical. I think you, I think you don't want to say it, but yeah, you, you've got <laughs> technical jobs. Hey, Somalia. What was in my hair? Oh, Atlanta. I have like a little scrunchie in my hair. It's very nice. Very color coordinated. It I know. It matches I, my dress. Cause I, can you see? Oh, nice. And oh my god, could, my Yes, my it's scrunchie. keying up because it's green. So uh, Rachel does not actually have a hole in her leg right there. I have a she hole just, in my leg. Right, that's amazing that it stays attached. How come my scrunchie doesn't have a hole? That's right. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Uh, <laughs> and actually, this color combo, it's not too, it's somewhat complementary to the well, background. Well, I'm also wearing black, so yeah. I think we'll fit. We, we oh. were trying to like, um, like coordinate outfits yesterday but i forgot to text you this morning you're yeah, like i'm wearing okay. I know. black you're wearing black i you i should. could i should have worn black and i have black with me so <sighs> okay all right we'll figure it out for tomorrow yeah what should we wear tomorrow yeah we're also toying with the idea of some uh additional things happening on here oh yeah guy liner oh yeah, guy liner maybe we'll put your hair in like pigtails too that won't happen but maybe some guy liner we'll I'm into see. okay yeah we'll see the pigtail thing mm. Well, you should have done your hair half up like me. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe half up. We'll see. 
It's getting weird. Okay. Thank you, Frank. Both nice hair. Very nice. So, okay. And Chris just sent you an Instagram. Okay. Oh, he did. Um, oh, thanks, Chris. So did I get it? Did I read it? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> Hi again, April Diamond42. Great to see you. Thank All right. You. So, um, basically now, I know oh, you were going to go, go through and uh, clean up a little bit of um, what we were kind of working on yesterday. Probably augment with some additional footage. Definitely, yeah. Evil Cerise. Jason in a black dress. Okay. Don't I would see. love to see that. Uh, you know, that's not totally out of the question. You know, I did get a question yesterday. Um, someone tweeted me, Heba tweeted me, and she asked me how I did one of my videos. Mm. Um, it's like my Valentine's Day video, and oh, it was yeah, like yeah. really um, like kind of dreamy looking. Right. And she was asking me how I put the filter on. I can show right. you guys the video and let you guys know how I did okay. that. Yeah. It's actually very easy. Um, yeah. You know what, let me just pull it up right now. Yeah, before. cool. That was the one with the soft look. Is that what she was referring to yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did that one. Let's see, where is it? V-Day. Cedric, it's getting weird. That's right. No way. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, this is the video in question. Let's just pop this up so you guys can see it. Mm -hmm. Asking mostly about yeah. So I got this look by um, it was actually just doing it very manually. I put saran wrap over my lens. Right. Yeah, and then I um, I put Vaseline. I was over gonna it. say it was lips. It's either chapstick or Vaseline. Yeah. It really does a trick. And it's then I also mixed it technique. with yeah. like um, with uh, like VHS. Right. Some mm -hmm. I shot some things on a VHS camera. So really nice. Yeah. It really works, and that's, you know, it's funny, um, with all the effects and digital processes that we have, oh, and Renice loves that one, too. Oh, thanks. Um, thanks, Renice. That we have to perform those same kinds of things, whether it's edge blur, softness, mm -hmm. even, you know, in the case of using something like After Effects, where you can simulate um, a rack focus or some of the things that you're doing in camera, mm -hmm. old school techniques like that, you know, really work well. Like, yeah. yeah, I really try to, like, get, like, the visual imagery that that's I right. want right out of the camera than doing as much I like don't want to do much post that's right you were saying that yesterday because you're typically working on simultaneous projects and you got to get them out so yeah if post takes longer than the shoot itself for you <laughs> it just delays delivery yeah. and your audience they don't want to wait I don't, don't even want to wait you don't even want to oh wait. man Galaxis black bars in that video that probably wouldn't would have been good huh mm-hmm could have been nice, yeah. That would have been a nice touch. I didn't That's, think about that. Yeah, well, and actually, and Galaxis brings up a great point there because a lot of people often ask, um, like, how do you how do you get that, you know, anamorphic, yeah, super cinema kind of look? Well, it's super easy because it's just right here now, right? <laughs> right. Well, and that's it. You can just fake it. With Where black bars, letterboxing, and then the key to is it black video? Yeah. And then you just you just you know crop or just place two of them on top and just move them positionally to 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 do the um, the letterboxing. Oh. But the other thing that you want to do when you're shooting, of course, and you can do this again, you can do this very primitively, um, either just having guides on in your camera and just remember where you know keep everything in frame. You know you can buy an actual gate, but keep things in frame, knowing that you're going to have sort of the top and bottom. Yeah obscured by black it's a great way to give I wonder how I've seen like on Vimeo where s people don't have the black bars but right. just have exported their videos extremely cinematically it's it's the same thing so yeah. they're now again depending on what they're oh shooting my god on. Jane Park I love you too hi very nice <laughs> she's one of my really good friends oh nice see I have friends too Jason I know that you're <laughs> What? It's all of Jason's friends on here. Oh, no, get out of here. Um, well, everyone loves you here. Thank you very much. No, uh, now, now you embarrassed me and made me lose my train of thought. What all was right. I just saying? Um, oh, yes. So, no, obviously there are certain formats that are actually shot in, a, in an anamorphic aspect ratio. But, uh, again, oftentimes for Vimeo, you can take something like this mm -hmm. that was, say, 1920, 1080. And cheat it. And you can export it, though, at, you know... Uh, 1920, 960, or whatever it is, and, and again, crop it accordingly so that it will actually export without the black bars. And you can, there's, there's ways to 
yeah, to cheat it and fake it. Or just make a sequence. Take what you edited with the black bars, nest it in a new sequence that's wide like that, uh -huh. and export it that way. There's a, there's a million different ways Oopsies, to do it. Oopsies, don't want to spell that. What was, what was going on with that? <laughs> <All right. laughs> What's happening there? Oops, something. Whoops. Okay. Yeah. See, this is, this is the thing about um, working with live footage is that there's things that oops did not mean to show, if you know what I mean. Okay. There's, oh, yeah, there's no audio on this bit here. Now, that was something, too. Yesterday, you were using a lot of the camera audio to kind of um, augment the voiceover and the music. Yeah. And uh, do you typically keep, like, the natural sound in there, too? I try to. It's mm -hmm. so nice yeah. to have um, that sound. I really love, like, the, really, the videos with, like, super crispy, like, cinematic sound. I have no idea mm -hmm. how to do that. Is yeah. it just, like, a boom mic or something, or...? Um, I mean, it's a combo of things, but yes, booms, booms can super can can certainly do that. Can you can achieve that? And if we have time today, I'll show you some some techniques and tricks we can do to kind of create that. All, the reason I was asking about the natural sound is because we can also um, fly in actual sound design of like wind and kind of something that would fit the environments you're in here. Mm -hmm. You know, that are just better recordings of ambient environmental sound. Okay. Right, because you know yeah. the camera, you're moving, so you kind of get that. Yes. With like it's a little too in and out at times, so this way it's a it's a little cleaner, a little nicer. All right. Okay. So what am I? All right. What are they talking about about black bars and Netflix and not do something in the export? Um, no, uh, Galaxis. I was saying if you want to create something that's kind of like a with uh, that sort of ultra wide aspect um, you could take a sequence for instance in Premiere that was 1920 1080 do ar artificially create letterboxing and then nest that in a new sequence and you can just you can determine whatever sequence size it is um, that would theoretically kind of conform to a 2.0 aspect ratio and then export with those actual dimensions and then you'll have something without letterboxing but it's ultra wide not unlike this monitor that we're reading your comments on right here Jane's asking, are you going to add footage of her, Rachie? No, Jane, because this could have been us and you playing. Oh. She was supposed dun, to come dun, with me to dun. Austria. It didn't work out. Oh, okay. It's All okay, right. Jane, next time. <laughs> next, next time. time. All right. Hey, hey, Gibosh, what's happening? All right. So we're back in your edit. Now, you have. did you turn your sound off on purpose? or? Uh, yeah, I'm just throwing footage in here footage so that in. like, okay. when we get down to like, really looking at my screen and editing it. Now are these, these are some of just the other clips that we just didn't get to review yesterday. So it was like bicycle and some other stuff, some like very different colors in a lot of the clips mm -hmm. that I'm kind of viewing there. Can you go full screen on your on your app too? Oh yeah, just yeah. Green. Bloop. Bzz, yeah. There we go, it's so much better. Yeah. Now that's something, you know, it's funny, actually Andrew, who's still in the studio with us and uh, <clears throat> Matt, this morning, you guys sometimes uh, do some different like workspace stuff, the way you've got panels laid out, and uh, I was going to ask you too, do you have any custom workspaces, any particular way you like to work, or do you kind of just leave it standard? I kind of use the presets, so I like assembly because it's like the most simple Okay, yeah. Setup. It's, cle it's clean, right? There's not a lot of other yeah. panels in the way. I, yeah. I know exactly what I'm looking at, which is yeah. so important for me because I'm like always confused. Right. Just kidding, guys. There was, a, there was a period where I didn't use any any default workspace or any non-default workspace, and then I sort of got very workspace heavy and modified everything. And, yeah. yeah. Now I can, if I, it's actually one of the great things of Creative Cloud is that you can sync your workspaces. So no matter where you log in, if I were to log in on Rachel's machine as me, all my workspaces are there. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. One little additional benefit of CC. <laughs> Jane's saying, wow, Shady. I know. Well, <laughs> she didn't call me yesterday. Oh, okay. Jane. We're getting personal on this show no, right I know. now. It's getting, uh, it's getting very personal, very deep. All right. So, again, if you've got questions for Rachel, too. Um, okay. So, I think we can, like, scrub through this okay. at this point. Now, is this your point and shoot, or is that 5D? This one was 5D. Okay, I was going to say, yeah, that, that looks really, there's some really nice 
shots. And was that actually underwater, like in a casing, or was that shooting through glass or something? Wait, which one? The one of you swimming a moment ago. Actually, this one right yeah. here, this, this is um, actually with the iPhone, iPhone 7. Oh, right. Oh, okay. iPhone I, 7. I just like pray and just like, I think I have insurance, so I'm just going to put my phone underwater and film some stuff. Oh, that's not even in oh, a yeah, case I, or anything? No, I just threw my phone underwater. You just put the phone as is in the water. Yeah. I know. It's bold. I wouldn't recommend anyone doing How's that. How's the phone now? Oh, it's great. I did it like 4th of July. <laughs> I did it in Austria. Oh, no, wait. Now, the iPhone 7, It is. is it water resistant-ish or that was the Samsung? It's it waterproof. Is. Yeah, it is waterproof. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's waterproof um, for 30 minutes. They say like you shouldn't use your phone for 30 minutes or like for a bit after. after. Right. Don't receive so, calls in a yeah. rainstorm kind of thing. I'll just like try to dry it off as much as possible. Oh, okay. Well, that's even more legit. Damn. Yeah. Awesome. Maybe throw it in rice if I need to. Underwater rigs are really expensive. I know, but like, look at this footage. I'm like pretty surprised of how great that looks. Oh, it looks great. That's why I was pretty sure it had to have been in some kind of casing. But uh, Liz, Lara, you need you an iPhone 7. You I need agree. an iPhone. Well, I think the iPhone 8's coming out quite soon, of course. Yes, of course. I know. In, already, during the holidays. All right, so. Already almost outdated, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, but who knows? So now this is all again going against the same voiceover. Now, have you did you slide the voiceover back into the beginning yes. so we kind of have a complete more so, complete? So, yeah. So how I started this project because um, I think bef yesterday I was working off of it by like just cutting a bunch of clips and piecing them together. Mm -hmm. But it has the purpose of this video was like so much more of a narrative that it helped have the narrative there. So right. what I did is I basically already have the song and the narrative there. Right. And now I'm just going to piece vid visuals over it versus doing it how I did before, which is visuals and narratives. Right. It was kind of a hot mess. I'm so sorry right. for doing that <laughs> to you guys yesterday. No. Very confusing. No, it was fine. I mean, again, that was, you it's were really, and you've been on the road for those tuning in today. Um, you just came back from this long two and a half week trip. Yeah. So this is kind of your last stop before home. Oh, thank God. I'm like moving time zones in. Right. <laughs> moving. I liked that yesterday. Uh, Renice was asking, what lens did you use in the 5D? I think we asked that yesterday. Oh, yeah. We used um, the 50 mil. Yeah. 50 millimeter, I think 1.4. 1. 1. Mm -hmm. But my favorite lens to shoot on um, is the 18 to... 18 to 35? No, 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 not that one. Sorry. The 24. That's, actually, that's 16 to 35. Sorry. Yeah. No. I think the 24 to... 24 to 105? 24 to 70. 70. Yeah. 24 to I'll 70. I'll just keep spitting them out. You tell me when. I was like, that sounds familiar. 2470 F2.8. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's, that's, a that's my favorite lens to shoot with because I love like the zooming yeah. in. I mm -hmm. like to zoom in and mm -hmm. I like the really wideness of the 24. Yeah, 24 is nice. So I like, that's what I usually nice. shoot with. Okay. Um, I just sold not long ago my, because I'm, I'm a Nikon guy now, or as I like to say, a oh, Nikon guy. Oh, uh, Nikon. But uh, I sold my 50 mil F1.2. Not long ago. 1.2? Yeah. Oh, the L lens? Uh, yeah. Ooh, fancy. Only L. Could you repeat where I can get royalty-free music that you said yesterday? Oh, yes, Zach. And in fact, Gus or uh, Evil Cerise can post the link. It's called Loopology, and it's more than 5,000 pieces of original royalty-free content in more than 35 different styles, played on more than 70 different instruments, largely by yours truly. Oh my gosh, can you say that in a deeper voice? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it also includes a library of um, 10, 15,000 sound effects as well, all of which are royalty-free. That's very impressive. So, yeah, there's great stuff in there. There's really good stuff in there. So they will post that link momentarily. Thank okay, you. Evil Cerise has got the link. Thank you, Gus. All right. So let's see. Let's kind of go. So how I'm going to do this right now is I'm just going to listen to the video, like what I have so far, like okay. the audio, and then kind of make notes along the way of like the pieces I want to move around. Okay. Um, and I think with the video, like you forget that it's like you would think that video is so like visual right. to do, first of all, but like. I actually like to like listen. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. think when you listen to the track more, then it really like pops the it story you're trying to tell. Definitely. Can we go um, full screen on your program monitor? Yes. To get the full the full experience. Well, this is very this is my rough cut. Right. It's a rough cut. Just just so they can see it also larger. Oh, nice. Dear individuality have text over that throughout the years 
I've watched you struggle, thrive. You know what? Let me turn on the music right here. That's really loud. We don't have to watch the whole thing, do we? Let's see. I, it's up to you. It's your show. It's my show. It's your show. So look, I'm turning down the song because it's an A3. This is A3. I'm just turning down the song right here. And you know what else I'm going to do? Um, okay, VO is the same. I put the VO up a little bit. Um, you still have the compressor on there as well. I did. Mm -hmm. I recompressed it. I don't know what I just did. Oh, I'm zooming out. What did I just do? Oh. Liz is asking um, how long it normally takes you to edit a vlog. Oh, my gosh. It takes me quite a long time. I would say each video probably takes me around eight hours total to okay. do. And what's your average duration, like what your upload duration? Not the, average, the finished mm -hmm. duration of your average upload. Uh, I don't know. Maybe like... Anywhere from five to seven minutes. I was going to say sub 10, probably five yeah. to nine. Okay, yeah. This one here looks like it's going to be just based on the fact that my voiceover lasted me about a little under two minutes. Right. The song's about two and a half so minutes. It'll be right somewhere so, in the ballpark. Yeah, yeah, so this video is probably like around two and a half minutes, mm -hmm. which is great because it looks like I have like enough footage to um, buffer through this, mm -hmm. which I'm stoked about. That's always something to worry about. Mm hmm. Yes, always wear your seatbelts, <laughs> but uh, sorry, guys. Yes. Oh, and Galaxis, because you asked before. Um, yeah, no. So actually, Rachel's not. She didn't. There's no After Effects and any any affecting at all. Largely, you're gonna do here. Yeah. yeah. And there's and there's minimal amounts of that. Anyway. Yeah, I know. Editing can be boring, but I think like once you get into the zone, it can right. feel a little bit like painting almost, where right. you're just like. Right really feeling the mood the song and, and feeling the canvas right yeah mm -hmm. it's yeah. definitely that canvas yeah. uh, let me do this too so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keyframe my audio um because i think right now my song on track three right here is like below five decibels i'm going to use the p tool right here just pressing p and then i'm going to zoom in here let's make this a little bit bigger so i can see what i'm doing um, and then I'm going to do two, three little P marks and I'm going to bring, oops, and I'm going to bring up the, the audio. You can see in the bottom left, right, bottom right corner. I'm left-handed. I know you are too. Do you ever get like your lefts and rights mixed up? Always, right? Mm -hmm. Because you think right is le like your, Correct. your left. See what I did there? Yeah. I still do this just to figure out like where I'm at in life. It's okay. I still do left loosey righty tidy when like screwing things in <laughs> oh yeah oh i do i do i'm like too. left loosey and then every time i'm like screaming directions like oh go right i mean left i like it bothers my friends so much and then that your I have friend to just... goes take a left you're like right no correct I do. yeah That's and good. i just now i just look at my fingers just to double check still you know you guys know this trick no right okay yes. so uh, Alexis is using vegas pro and after effects okay Ooh, what's right. Vegas Pro? Vegas Pro is Sony's uh, nonlinear editor. Uh, uh. Yes. Ooh. There are many choices. We love we love that they you can work together with the two. That's yeah, it. there you go. Okay, let's see this in full. So I just panned the music, which you're gonna hear. It's gonna be some text over this. Dear individuality. throughout the years. I've watched you struggle, thrive, embrace, rebelled throughout all the years. From awkward pubescent years to navigating the transition into adulthood, you've never stopped leaping through adversity and overcoming internal confrontation. Even more now, our world has become so homogenous that a singular screen becomes an estranged mirror to see everything at once. With these kinds of challenges, it's becoming harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self and aspirations. If for a moment you lose your tracking, it's okay. It's normal. But I want to remind you, it's not impossible to overcome. Step outside of your box and let nature cleanse the soul. Give yourself that immediate mental restart button you so deserve through foreign environmental sensory experience. Turn off your data and be present, allowing the only viewable screen to be the HD window to the world around you. Observe, acknowledge, digest. However, 
Remember not to absorb vapidness so naively that much of our commercialistic living is a forced connection. Instead, emphasize your opinions. I think that's it. Where am I? A oh. guilt that you aren't good enough. My hope is that one day you will know you are always going to be doing your best. You will always fall into good and bad decisions that continue to define you and mold you into the best version of yourself. Okay. Oh, right. so. you, were just, you were just showing a little bit of my favorite. I have like two... I say candy, is that right? I have like two sweet things that oh. I like. One of them is Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. The other are Mama Me. Vefas. And I like specifically... Th th those are the original hazelnut kind. I actually prefer uh, the vanilla flavor, oh, which yeah. are the best. In uh, like you have to get them in Austria. You have to get them uh, actually specifically in Vienna. Really? really? Yeah. You could oh. used to be able to get them at like Costco. <laughs> that is the no. worst sound of like a flag. That's <laughs> that's how. See how effective that was. That's don't buy them there because they're not good. <laughs> buy them in Vienna. I have yet to eat it. I just bought what? it purely for aesthetics. What? <laughs> just what? to be a prop in all my photos. Oh, I will eat it. Eat it. Okay. It's kind of crushed up now. Oh. I know. Oh yeah. Oh, they're so good. I know. The original you, flavor, though, you can buy those all over the U.S. They're fine, but the the vanilla ones, I found only they're only or vanilla almond, whichever it was. They uh, I could I only got really good ones in um in Vienna. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Well. Very good. So Lori Dumas is saying she really enjoys your editing process. And that's sending, so sending love from Quebec City. Oh, merci. Hello, San Francisco Discovery. Merci, merci. Wow, this clip is really long. So, yeah, you know what I just showed you guys is, like, really, really rough. That was just truly me throwing in a ton of footage. So how did you shoot this one? I was going to ask you. I didn't want to disturb the VO there, but... Um, I just held my point-and-shoot camera really, really still above me. You're holding it there? I'm holding the camera like this. Really? <laughs> yeah, is that kind of crazy? I That's didn't realize how still that... You're very... You're alien still there. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but you're very still. Oh, that was that was kind of crazy. Yeah. Okay. I was wondering. I'm like, was there a like a tray maybe above you or something? And like you're like shooting a tripod. Through? Yeah. No. Something. That's cool. Purely. Do do do. Nice. Roland Kallenberg. It's six thirty in the morning over there. Oh my goodness. You are very dedicated. In That's where? That's what just said. Galaxis is in Germany. Oh yeah, wait. It's six thirty in Germany right no, now. No, it's no, it's six thirty in Singapore. Oh wow. A.M. How do I delete this? Germany would be. Oh, did I just ish. delete everything? My bad. You did. Oh, that scared me. It's okay. You know you have your history. You can always. How do I delete this little box right here? I normally just like V and then and then delete, but it's not deleting. I can't even move it. There, there's no footage there. It's just dead space. But how do I get rid of the dead space? Um, well, you can select everything and and ripple. I mean, it, I think you have other holes in there, though, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not gonna it's not gonna ripple with other holes. There is okay. a way to kill that dead space. I don't remember what that shortcut is either. Yeah. But just wow. select all the footage to the right, and you can just drag and then move it all over. It's, that's the easiest way. It's kind of a pain. There has to be an easier way. There might be. So I always think there is always an easier way to do something. Hmm. Been awake since three. Ah, yes. And of course, Roland, you can watch all of the uh, the replays um, anytime now. They're permanently archived here on YouTube. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have my earbud in and still talk to you guys, and you guys can watch me edit. But that's that way you seem to like listen to my VO over and over and over again. Okay, I mean I think it's fine. It's not it's not disturbing. Oh okay. Yeah, okay. it's louder for us than it is for them because oh. the microphone's picking More up. Here, so yeah, they're just hearing a little bit. Actually, I think it's it's nicer. Just just make sure you. Just oh, Gibosh is like saying this. function delete should pull should remove that hole. Hmm. Oh, no. Okay, function delete's not working for me. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Like I said, if you just select everything to the right. Click drag. To the left, to the left. <laughs> I won't do that. <laughs> All right. Oh, hi, Liz. Thanks for tuning in. 
That was really sweet of you. Have fun at work. I'll visit you. Where do you live? Coco has a cool comment, too. I love how you frame the subject within the image using the windows and the walls. Yeah, and you've got a lot of these cool, you've got that tennis court shot, which also has kind of that that sort of very symmetrical look on the court. Oh, yeah. yeah very it's like a little Wes Anderson-y, but It is. Darker. It's Wes anderson -y. It's a little Stanley Kubrick-y, too. Yeah, I was I I was thinking more of like the lobster. I forget who you said did that the yesterday. Lobster. Yeah, I my 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 head went straight to The Shining, but <laughs> that just tells you where I'm. I mean, I'm that's at. not bad either. <laughs> There's a lot of hallway shots in there. I know. Every time I walk in the hallway at the hotel, <clears throat> I just I can't ever not think of that. I did a I did a Behance project that was um, inspired by that, and it was actually it was a hotel in Germany, and I was like standing there one day, and it just kind of. I, just, I was I was standing in the hallway, and I, in fact, I called the project "Shining." Hey, wait, while here, wow. while you're doing that, yeah, look at how similar this is. Can we pull up uh, my screen real quick, Chris? How was my day? My day, Chris. It's it's been good. <laughs> I've been working a lot. Adobe has me very busy. That's right. Can't you imagine? Wow. Did you add grain on that? Yeah, in this particular. I can't remember, on this one, um, this was when I was in a period when I was doing these, um, a friend of mine showed me a technique. So this is actual, it's grain and dust and flex from actual film negative. Whoa, did you I, impose it in? Yeah, so I scanned it um, with a negative scanner that I have and then inverted it and then overlaid it on top. So, um, but yeah, as you're looking at this, doesn't it feel like, Danny, come play with us. <laughs> Don't go in room 247. And that kind of has a creepy shining vibe right there. How do I... Let's... Only because this shot's really okay. bothering me, but I love it. Let's 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 try to stabilize it. Okay. So I would go into effects, correct? Mm-hmm. I'll go into the editing area because that's a little bit easier now for me. And then I'm going to go into effects. Yeah. I'm going to pull up this clip. Effects control. So just under effects, just type warp in the search there. Stabilizer. I'm gonna drag it into my effects control. You can you share those grains? Um, actually, Jason has like the best collection of like grains and like glitch effects and stuff like that. Yeah. No. So these these I actually made, but um, oh. yeah, maybe I can. I don't have them with me today, uh, Aisha. But yeah, those that would be really cool. They were. Um, it worked great, and like I said, it was actual film. I had I didn't shoot new film. It was film that I had, and this friend of mine who's an amazing photographer named Alyssa Achilles, she said, uh, yeah, you know, I always, because she, she had all these great images, and I noticed, like, the scratches and everything were always so unique. Mm -hmm. I have filters that do, there's a lot of filters that do that. Um, what is it, Alien, Alien Skin? Alien Skin makes some fantastic plugins for Lightroom that do it. Uh, but these were really unique, and, and she said, oh, it's, it's just old film that I scanned. That's really cool. Went, oh, I've got old film, and I've got a film scanner, so it's awesome. That's Works right. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I want a scanner. Mm-hmm. Let's see how this so shot yes, looks Aisha, now. I will, I will, uh, I'll relocate those and make those available at some point. Okay, just need a, you. a render real quick. Okay. Rendering, or maybe, yeah, we'll render. Um, so let's see. You can also just render the work area just for that clip. It'll take far less time. So you don't even have your work area bar showing. So um, go to the wrench menu, I think it's in here. Uh, no, not there. OK, so it's this flyout menu there. Let's forget work area bar. Mm. And uh, here, zoom out. And then just grab the blue handles down here, this one. Yeah, and snap it to the edge of that, and then grab the end one. Oh, it did it. There you go. And now you can just render the work area. Sweet. Rendering. And the reason for that is just because with um, the warp stabilizer, uh, again, you're and you're at full, so sometimes playback for real time, it's it's just not quite as. Oh, and here, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo this for you. Did you guys watch um, Andrews? cast last yesterday's Andrew just before me uh I'm sure many did yeah he's great yeah he's fantastic I love um we were having like such a great conversation at dinner yesterday like basically talking about 
how um, it's such an honor to be on the show, like mm -hmm. showing our techniques and stuff. But even more so, it's really cool to see that everyone has their own work process. But ultimately, like, what's your MO going about it? You know, right. like, I think what Andrew has said that was really cool and also how you guys found him was because he was always in the group chat right and always contributing and helping and right. being like just an amazing talented um, motion graphics artist right. um, but I think that's so cool because his his whole MO is like just genuinely wanting to help people yep. and any anyone and anyone he can everyone yeah mm -hmm. maybe I, am I over this render process I, uh, uh, we're over it so just drop to quarter or half res I mean, it's just seem it's seem. How long is that clip? I don't know why it's taking so long. Oh, I don't know, but maybe it's because I tried doing the stabilizing on it. Let's see. Well, yeah, but even still, it, it's not that long. So you should be able to see it stabilized now. It's not even playing. Okay, so let's try one more thing. So let's go up to your um, uh, file menu. Yes. And we're going to go into project settings. I'm guessing you're in software only and go to general. And you don't have any render option here. That's strange. Huh? Huh? Maybe it's not in this place. Are you updated? You must be. You have Lumetri. Hmm. Can we can we save this and, and, and go back in? Just yeah. 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 Just, you, I don't see any render options at all. That's weird. Like clo I meant like close Premiere. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just okay. kind of. Bye, Felicia. Restart it. <laughs> <laughs> you say that when you're the force quit. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Hmm. Do you have any tips for the warp stabilizer? Uh. Warp stabilizers works if I accidentally shake the camera. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. Funny guys. Yeah, so um, Shelly asks, um, a good sort of rule of thumb with using the warp stabilizer uh, <clears throat> is because oftentimes when a shot is shaky, you know, um, and here I'll just like grab my phone. So you go to shoot something, right? So you, you grab your whatever camera it is and you're like, you're framing the shot. And even if you're on a DSLR or a mirrorless or an iPhone, you, you, there's that moment where you like, engage record and usually that engage moment has uh -huh. some kind of shake uh -huh. and then you kind of get the bit you want that you'll ultimately use and that's shaky but okay and then there's the stopping which also adds extra shake so a good sort of rule of thumb is when you go to stabilize something cut out like the extreme shake on the on the top and the tail the beginning and the end because then it won't analyze those bits. What happens is if it analyzes like extreme shake, mild shake, extreme shake, it doesn't really quite understand and it often will throw off the results somewhat significantly. Oh, no. So, um, all right, so let's go back to file, project settings, general. Okay, I'm gonna have to see what's going on there. Oh, you know what? I have one other idea why that's happening. Can we check one more thing? Because this could this could vastly improve your performance. Doesn't even look like it's moving, but you know. <laughs> I it, was it, like, wow, that's it, a really good. It's dry. It was yeah. dropping frames. All right, let's do one more thing. Let's just go into your Apple menu. Now we're gonna go into System Preferences. What does Laurie say, Rachel? I was wondering if you have any tips for when you feel like your clips. Oh wait, can we scroll back up? Um, here, not from there, but here I'll pull it up over here. Okay, wait, so where, where am I yeah, going? Yeah, go into your energy saver. Uh-huh. No, okay. Um, all right, let's click out of there, go back. Maybe I just don't have the strongest computer. I don't know, but you should have opened CL. I don't understand. It's just that one clip that's not working for us. I remember that there is a way that you just render one clip. Yeah, no, no, no. That's what I was doing. It was just taking forever. That's what the work area bar is for. Oh. Yeah. Just rendering the effects in the work area. That's so weird. Here, go back to the sequence. Let's try it now that we restarted and see. Mm -hmm. Under effects in work area. That's the first one at the top. Sequence settings? Mm -hmm. 
I'm just making this mistake. Oh, I nope, see. No, right there. Yeah, I mean, it's only a hundred something frames. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be taking this long. You also said yesterday you have like 10 gigs free on your system now? Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. Oh, it is? Yeah. Straight up. <laughs> Just letting you know. I'm gonna get a better laptop next things time. Things <laughs> are gonna slow down. Now, one thing you can do uh -huh. um, is that we can clear your cache. Um, we don't have to do that right now, yeah. but we can clear your cache. Okay, here is what Rachel said to you. Laurie. Rachel, Laurie. yeah. Yes, that's your Rachel. Rachel. Yes. I was wondering if you have any tips for when you feel like your clips aren't cohesive or fit well together. I feel sometimes I make videos and they can get messy looking. Oh my gosh, that happens to me all the time. I feel like even this video right now that I'm working on might be a little bit hard to piece together because we kind of just run and gunned it. But um, I think with that, it always comes down to like, if you can piece clips together with music and just focus mainly on like the sound design of what you're making, it can mm -hmm. really tie together a piece even if you weren't intending it to work out in the first place like that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and Skyhawk, but you think you've met me 10 years ago. Do I have a brother called Hung, where you both lived in Scotland? I would have to say that is a hard no. Never lived in Scotland. <laughs> Don't have a brother named Hung either. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. So, you know, you know, we're just hanging out while this renders right here. I mean, so no, and again, your cache, very likely, if you've never cleared it, mm -hmm. you might be able to free up 50, 70, 100 gigs of space. No way. Way. How do, how do I look at that? Well, you can't do it while you're rendering right now. This is a motion render, but it looks like it's, it's picking moving. up speed, but it's taking way longer than it should. The chat is okay. working. Oh, Chris, are you talking about on AdobeLive.com? I know we were having some, uh, yeah, it's working now. Okay, yeah, they were having some. Oh, yeah, that was, wasn't was working for me earlier, yeah, too. Yeah, there was a problem yesterday. <laughs> Bernice, how do you only live with 10 That is a very free? valid, very valid concern. Yeah. Um, I usually work off my little hard drive right here, but I don't know. I guess when I got my laptop, I just didn't think to get, like, more memory. Mm -hmm. It hasn't really um, affected me other than mm -hmm. when I'm trying to render something. Right, right yeah. yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, Qua, have you ever found yourself searching for hours and hours for good music? Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I probably spend more time looking for music than I do editing. And everyone always asks me if I can like share my Spotify and SoundCloud. I'll share my Spotify because I can't use that music and I'm happy to share mm -hmm. my music, but I spend so much time looking for music on SoundCloud that it's really hard for me to like let that go. Right. Because I'm sure like other creators want to. Sure. No, that's right. Like it's you were saying selfish. yesterday, that's, um, you know, that's like one of the bigger, I mean, that's, that's universal for anybody, unless you're a composer, um, getting music that is good, but license free, royalty free, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So I know, I hate to say I'm a little selfish with. Um, the music I find, but uh, yeah, I mm -hmm. spend hours doing it. Um, Miguel, your question, is it better to render inside Premiere or via Adobe Media Encoder? So that's a great question, actually. <laughs> um, and there's, it's, it's, it's a two-part answer. So better, um, I don't exactly know what that means. Here's what happens when you render directly from within Premiere inside the export settings dialog, which is media encoder. Um, it's what's known as a modal render. So basically you're locked out of doing anything else. Um, it uses also the software renderer. It doesn't go through if you have a supported GPU or something like OpenCL. It's just using the Premiere software renderer. What it does though when you do that is that it takes all the resources of your machine. So this is when uh, you go file export media and there's an export button uh -huh. and it exports right away but like yeah. you can't click out of it. Uh -huh. That's modal like this. It uses all the resources of your machine. So theoretically it's a faster render. Hmm. But there's, you really can't do anything. You can't even really check mail, right? Like it takes all the resources of your system. Okay, there's your stabilized clip. Wow, that stabilization look looks so good. So good. Really, Do you guys really see good. that? Yeah, they can they can see it. 
Yeah. Why don't you go full screen? Oops. There we go. Adversity and overcoming inter Actually, let me put this um, to. So while we're still just scrubbing, and then basically, if you go to media encoder, you've never stopped leaping through adversity and overcoming internal confrontation. Even more now, our world has become so oh, homogenous. It's, you know, it's because you're kicking into the render there. It's just going to slow down. Even more now, our world has. There we go. Mm. Even more now, our world has become so homogenous that a singular screen becomes an estranged mirror but to see there's everything no shape. at once. With these kinds of that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's smooth. Um, so yeah, so just to continue, so uh, media encoder allows for background rendering, which means you can do other things. It uses the resources that you allocate via your memory settings in Premiere or wherever, um, and you have a choice of renderer software, GPU, OpenCL, or CUDA, or Metal if you're on um, Sierra or El Capitan. So. Um, and, you, and, then the, and the key is you can do other things because it's background. So if one's better, I mean, typically, if I'm doing something that I need to get out fast, I'll do the export directly because it's faster. I don't try and do anything else, so I just let it fly. Um, and then if, I, if I'm queuing up a bunch of things, like sometimes some scenes or just some pre-renders of things, I send them to the media encoder, I can render them, and then I, as it's rendering in the background, I'll go, you know, check mail, surf, do whatever. Well, that's nice. Surf. Yeah. Surf. In Arizona? Web surf. Oh. <laughs> old school. Old school terminology there. Did I actually just say surf? That's where my head went. I. Wow. I don't. Where did that even come from? I. I've, I have absolutely not said that since probably '99. That was very. I think you just dated yourself saying that. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> no. No mystery there. I don't know. Silver hair is actually very popular. Silver so. hair is very popular right now. <clears throat> So I don't know if you just made it yourself. That's all right. You dyed your hair like that. I, totally. I think the age Choice. came when you said you're surfing the web. Surfing the no, the, it would have been it would have been dating if I did surfing the world wide web. That's, that's really the right. www. www. Oh yeah, what's your site? www. You're very welcome, Miguel. Let's put some text over this. Let's this down here. Shalias, I don't know why that's happening. Um, I mean, it's not a known issue as far as I know. <laughs> Thank you, Kibosh. Uh, you just had to write that on the interwebs forever, huh? Forever. Um, that's right. Um, you know, again, if you're if the program, if you like, if the, you get the application not responding thing, can absolutely be that you're running out of free space. Uh, another good sort of tip is um, you always want approximately half. This is again just the best practice. It's not that things won't work. It's that best practice is you, you typically want half of the total space of your drive available as free. So like if you have, I don't know what you have in here. Do you have like a 500 gig drive in here? Let's check. Or 250 or. Um, I don't know, does that tell you your drive space there? I think it will if we go to like... Definitely don't have half document system apps. Is that correct? You have 120 gigs? You have like... Am I seeing that right? I have 120 gigs. You have 120 gig hard drive? Yeah. They actually make 125 gig hard drive? Wait, is that small? It's wickedly small because this is two terabytes. Oh. That's legit. That's like that's like Playa right there. This is like what is 120 well, gigs? What are you doing here? I think because it was a flash storage, so it's different. Oh yes. Oh yeah. So right. So you could have 256. It probably tops out at 512 or something like that. Maybe. So this is 128. Then is what that actually is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 lean. It's lean. It's very lean. It's super lean. So yeah. So theoretically, though, having said that. You would want, for best performance, uh -huh. you'd want 64 gigs free. Great. Yeah. Now, we can try towards the end, we can clear, we're not going to clear your cache now. Okay. But we can try clearing your cache, and I guarantee you it frees up at a minute. If you've never done it, at a minimum, it's going to free up 10 to 20 gigs. I, I, I don't think I've ever done guarantee. it. I would almost guarantee. Notice I say almost. <laughs> Things may have been reconfigured somehow. Kukai Bosch. How do you say it? Gibosch. Gibosch. 
120 gigs on the MacBook too. You guys can hang out, see? Yeah. Well, what do you have now? Do you, are you at like 13 gigs like me? <laughs> <laughs> the internet. Okay. Um, only Premiere Pro certified GPUs are probably like lately. I struggle rendering some effects via CUDA. Um, no, I mean, so those are, again, it's the, theoretically any CUDA supported card should work. Any, any CUDA card should technically work. Doesn't necessarily have to be the certified GPU. Um, you know, a lot of that has to do with the driver, you know, uh, and that's in, on NVIDIA's side. It, uh, yeah, and as Chris said, yeah, there's 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 occasionally some issues, um, but they usually bring it back around pretty quickly. But um, yeah, if you don't have uh, a CUDA card, there's always OpenCL as an option, or um, on both platforms. Or again, if you're in Sierra, you'll also have Metal. He's at six gigs. Oh my gosh, that's we very are bold. living on the edge. You really are living on the edge. Sick. Okay. So are you just kind of trimming the cuts here to like uh, the le you know, like just better lengths? You're just kind of doing small tweaks here at this point? Yeah, I'm just like cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. It's kind of like, you know, when you're cleaning um, your house or your apartment. Yeah. And you're just like slowly piecing things together Absolutely. and eventually something happens even though you like don't have the method. Yeah. It's kind of what I'm doing. Just like I feel like oh, yeah. I'm just sweeping. Mm-hmm. Like a blank slate. Right. Oh, by the way, Roland uh, Collenberg brings up a great point and suggestion here. So this is something that a lot of people um, maybe maybe they're just not aware that you can do it. But so like, you can add memory cards in your. Well, yeah. So you can use an S an S SD XD card. So they're so fast now, and you can get 128 gig. Mm. 256 gig cards, fairly inexpensive, like $60, you know, like camera cards, right? Yeah. Oh, XD card, SD card. Do you put and it in your computer? Yeah, yeah. So do you have the slot on, on this machine? Oh, so you have you to do. put it in your computer. Yeah, it goes right there. Oh, It's I like see. right for you. It, your but point you sheet has like it. But you can't like put it inside. No, 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 no. But the idea is that can be your your cache. That is brilliant. Yeah. And it's, brilliant. it's, that's right. And it's also, again, it's, you know, flash drive so it's there's no spinning parts it's super fast it's very efficient and it's cheap that's so cool yeah. i mean i know like on my i have an older um imac mm -hmm. and i was able to like take it apart somehow yeah right yeah and, you like, can like, actually slip, slip out the hard drive and stuff sure and you could you could i mean i'm sure if you want to pay whatever it is for this machine i'm sure there may i'm sure you could upgrade that well i don't know on these sounds but expensive it, i'm sure through apple it's very expensive to change the flash drive internally there um, especially because it'll be sorted, sourced by their own hardware. But um, yeah, that's a great, that's a great tip. Um, I usually recommend that for uh, um, uh, for After Effects cache. And yes, SSD, not to be confused with SD or XD cards. I knew what you were saying there, but that's you reminded me of a technique which um, a lot of After Effects users uh, sometimes do. It's actually really great. I don't have it connected to this machine because, as I mentioned, I just got it back recently, but. Um, and this one has a terabyte SSD internal. Okay. So I'm just putting my title in. Individuality. Stops working, rendering at the same time. I bought a transition preset pack from a YouTuber, and I think Premiere can't render the transition. Hmm. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, maybe there's some incompatibility with the plugin. What plugin is it? Shall I ask? I'm curious. How do I make this text bigger? Like the box space. Just make the box space bigger? Mm hmm. Uh, easiest oh. way is just to, yeah. I knew that. Okay. <laughs> now I noticed you're doing that in the actual effects controls. Mm -hmm. Have you done it in the essential graphics panel? Do you Should like we try it? it? Well, I think it, it it feels a little less cumbersome for me. I don't know if you which you prefer. It's a workspace. Um, um I, I think either is okay. I would like the graphics panel if I'm doing other effects on it, like putting background and stuff into it. Ah, okay. Fair but enough. I think I'm yeah. just doing yeah this. Do you have a favorite font? I do. 
I'm not gonna share it. Yeah. It's on my <laughs> See, right I was, now. I was gonna see if I could sneak that out of here. <laughs> I have terrible font anxiety, so when I get them, and they're usually suggested by our very own Paul Tranny or Michael Shez, um, I roll with them for quite some time until, you know, thin or thick or ultra thin is out, and then I have to defer <laughs> to them to know which one to use next. But the one last year, you remember, Paul? My two favorites, it was Iskra and Instant. And Instant was suggested by Michael, and I think I think you're the one who turned me on to Iskra. Wait, there was a way that I could position it directly in the middle by pressing yeah. two buttons. Yeah. Where is it? To scroll up. So, uh, yeah, so this is where you need the Essential Graphics workspace. What do you guys call it again? Essential Graphics. No, you guys had, like, the little thing for it. Yeah. Oh, what just happened there? Oh, just hit the top right corner again. Yeah, so it's um, vertical center, horizontal center. Mm. Oh, isn't it called, like, a gek gekka? You guys have, like, a weird sound for graphics panel. Mogurt. You're thinking Mogurt. That's, oh. the, that's the file that you can export that's a motion graphics template. Oh, Mogurt. Yeah, Mogurt. <laughs> Gecko. I was like, Gecko. I'm I don't know. Yeah. Lizard? <laughs> yeah. Chris uses Galpon. Okay. If Michael Happy and use Lobster. Juan Pablo Comic Sans. Bah ha ha ha. We do. Is lobster? I is lo. I don't know. I don't know. It's a free font. Oh, okay, we'll have to check it out. That's funny. Times New Roman, right? What was the other? What's the other? Uh, with the P, which one is it? Um, bad font choice. How do I fade? <laughs> That's a bad one. What's um? It begins with a P. What am I thinking of? Palmito. I don't know. How do I fade? Transition fade. I remember it used to be in here. You fade the text up? Like um like a transition, like fade in. Between fade. clips? Mm-hmm. But on the like text. Like a transition. Yeah, yes. but I'm gonna do it on the text. Yeah, so well text you're gonna do via opacity here. Ooh, oh, and I have to keyframe it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Papyrus. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's what I was trying to say. Right. <laughs> Excellent. 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 Sarah Pandas and Juan Pablo. I'm becoming more like my grandparents every day. They could uh, always remember the first letter <laughs> of the word they were trying to, the word they were thinking of. It's with a P. You know. Whoops. So. Andre, you've been using Adobe products since, for 25 years. It's a linear edition. Oh, nice. I don't know if I did this right. Uh, when you change your project settings from GPU acceleration to software, it works. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, software will typically be slower because it's not accelerated, right? I mean, it will be slower. But, um, yeah. Look, I did my Oh, yes, you could, of course, use an actual dissolve on the text layer, but in trying to use, again, I, I'm assuming you were maybe trying to create some kind of template here. Oh. You could actually just use the same dissolve that you use on video. Just yeah. drag the same dissolve oh, on Oh, I see. Yes, I, but I was trying to show you again here, because it's the graphics panel, mm -hmm. and then you can restyle it here. I don't know. I Do was, a lot of different things here. We're trying to push the essential graphics workflow The Mogurt? Yeah, the Mogurt. Mogurt? Yes. Individuality. I've watched you struggle, thrive, embraced, rebelled throughout the years. I've watched you struggle, thrive. Oh. Oh, did you repeat that? I repeated that. That's why I did that. Hello. Um, hi Jennifer. Thank you. Queen. Yeah. Love that. I feel like um people who watch my channel keep me very young. Mm -hmm. I learned things like slay and queen and fleek and oh, yeah. snatched is fleek still up there though that I, seems almost a little i know it's downward. so quickly you can get data well that's so it quickly. that's it they, you know what did i hear someone say 
I don't know, I heard someone say surf the World Wide Web earlier, and I was like, wow. I think I just used surf to, to be clear. Thrive, and, uh, embrace, yes. Rebel throughout the years. I was thinking of. I've said what? I said what? I don't know, I don't remember. It's late in the day. It's the studio air. Does it feel stuffy in here? <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not entirely. It's, it feels it feels warm. Okay. Ooh, that's a great question. Yeah, so options for making it faster on a slower PC. Well, first and foremost for cutting is leveraging the fractional playback, which you saw Rachel play with before. Yeah, right here. Um, quarter. Yeah, quarter res. So fetch. That's right. Um, that's, you know, that's just going to make it possible to scrub significantly better on a, on a lower powered PC. Um, you know, uh, you can also do um, uh, save your render previews, you know, for rendering later. That's um, web crawler, nice. Uh, that's an option too. Um, again, if you've got GPU acceleration, you should have at least an OpenCL option sometimes. Uh, that's okay. The information super highway. Wow, that's Andre. That's like, that's way, that's looking way back. Al Gore still says that at times. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple things. Again, a lot of it, a lot of it is sort of RAM based too, and it depends on the footage you're using. You know, if you're on a an underpowered machine with four gigs of RAM, and you're editing 1080p, sort of HD standard. As it is, you're already at the very baseline level of um, uh, of requirements to even run the app. So those things that I just mentioned will make it better. It's not likely going to be awesome because, again, you're kind of at the very, very baseline standard for just getting the app to launch. Um, so RAM really plays a, a, a huge part in performance, as does the content you're cutting, you know? Um, you know, I, I typically recommend for anybody who's doing any kind of HD 720p or, or above to, you know, you ideally want at least 8 gigs of RAM. Um, and you want to allocate uh, generally like a 70-30 ratio active to inactive RAM. So in your uh, preferences, um, under memory, and again this is the same prefs that you have in After Effects, Premiere, it's shared across uh, Photoshop and Audition. Um, you can set, you know, the RAM reserved for inst other installed apps and then the active RAM. So I have 16 gigs. I use 11 for the active app in focus and five for everything else in the background. Um, and you can allocate more and you can optimize running for performance or for memory. So there's, there's a couple different things and it works differently with different, uh, between Mac and uh, PC OS, you see like slight differences by changing the render options there. But that's kind of it. Chat disconnected. Oh, interesting. Oh no, what happened to us? <laughs> We're an hour in. Should we put should we put up um, another one? I feel like this. Do <laughs> you feel like you're you're dragging along? <laughs> Kind of, I feel like huh. me trying to edit okay. this is you, getting you play a little... with that for one second. I'm just going to go check what's happening with our chat. What are you checking on? Why are you leaving me? Am I still, are people still watching us? Oh, oh okay, because um, I see nothing, so I thought we were like off for a second. So, hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> Jason, what do you, what do I do without you? Should I sing the song that I was stuck in my head all day yesterday? Baby's on fire. Better throw her in the water. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much. Just trying to support y'all here. 
Um, what was I talking about? Oh, I really want to talk about, I mean, other than this whole editing process, I think what's really important is kind of what Andrew was talking about, and that's like the community that you're trying to communicate to. I think we all we are all creators with a skill set. That's really awesome, and Adobe's like provided amazing tools to make it happen. But I think what's really cool is um, just the community involved. I can't see what anyone's saying, so if anyone's talking to me, I have no idea. I'm just gonna throw out ideas, but I always like thought it'd be really fun to be live for 24 hours. I think Katy Perry did that. She was alive for like 72 hours. Anyone know about that? I thought that was kind of interesting. I would totally do it, maybe. But I'd have to like know that I was being recorded, you know? Okay, so enough rambling. So while they're doing that, and I can't see you guys. Observe, acknowledge. See that like four beat word? I would really like to have four different clips on top of that, but I don't have four different clips to put on top of it. I kind of am already bored of looking at this project already. I'm also like in the middle of simultaneously editing three videos. Maybe let's just like pull up another one. So I'm gonna save this. Am I still live? I am. <laughs> Do I wanna screen something? I'll just like, you know, just keep talking to myself. Um, I'm gonna try to carry the show as if Jason would. You know, my singing, um, <laughs> Paul's in the background trying to tell me to sing. Um, I definitely will not be singing. What was the song you were singing? Baby's on fire. Better throw her in the water. We all need to sing, though. Uh huh. That movie. Velvet Goldmine. Oh. <laughs> Well, see, I didn't, I didn't actually know that it was a song from a movie because I haven't watched that movie yet. No, I knew this before because I was like trying to um, figure out like more about the band, and then as I was digging deeper, I realized it was all fictional. Let's open another project here. We got another hour. Um, so another video I'm working on. Very simple. It was just me putting my makeup on. Okay, so where have I left? So this is kind of the other content I like to do too. I like to talk to the camera a lot. Um, oh, you know what? But while I'm like just sitting here talking to myself, unsure if anyone's actually watching me, um, we actually have a contest going on right now with Premiere Pro, which you guys should totally check out. Um, maybe someone will put a link in the box, but um, you guys can win a thousand dollar Visa gift card, one year subscription to um, Adobe, a one year subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud, and hopefully a mentoring session with myself or Jualzy. So all you have to do is make a video. I made a tutorial that you guys can check out, and if you follow the tutorial and you know post about it you are entered. And right now there hasn't been a lot of entries, so your chance of winning is pretty high. Zing. Anyways, I talk about that a little okay, bit in here. So, where have I left off with you guys? So I wanted to do something a little different today. I haven't actually done, like, a get ready with me. Talking to the camera for a while. But me and catch up with you guys. So I'm here today to sit down, hang out. Literally just me doing my makeup. But I might throw in some text. Huh? You know what? This one's boring too. Let's open a different one. Oh, didn't mean to open that one again. Sorry, fans. Our chat machine went down, so we're having to. Paul's decided to uh, t donate his laptop in the meantime. That basically means we can't see what you guys are saying, That's and right. it just feels like we're talking to an empty room. Okay. Here, 
until we get that up. So I kind of wanted to share how I made this video. Yes. Okay, here, so Rachel, let me tell you, can, can see it here. <laughs> Rachel wants to be the star of a Truman-like show. I basically am having a YouTube thing, but there's another comment above. What do I consider when making transitions? Um, ooh, oh, wow, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have the, um, what am I trying to say? The focus to read all of these things. I'm like scatterbrained right now. So, okay, we're catching up on comments. Yeah. Let's see. Rachel, what's the favorite video that you've ever made? That's a great question. Um, my favorite video I've ever made was, it was a parody video of like how I travel. I'll just play it for you guys right now. I don't know if you guys have watched my YouTube channel at all, but um, I started off with a fashion blog and that was about 10 years ago. And about three years ago, I transitioned into making videos full time just because I thought there was like a huge missing market in the YouTube space. You know, like I'm not necessarily like that type of girl who's like, hey, this is what's in my bag. So then I started a YouTube channel and, you know, it's okay. it was really awesome. Well, don't worry about it. I've got it here for us. Don't, don't even worry about We're it. We're still troubleshooting. I have, uh, I have it here. Yeah, thanks, man. It's cool. Sorry, everybody. You know, our, our, the, network that we use for that went down boo so, Where luckily is that it's video? a different network <laughs> than the one we're broadcasting on it doesn't make it any less awkward where is my favorite video oh here this is my favorite video okay yeah they still have you oh I'll just... what's up guys i'm carly Kloss. you know i really look I'm like carly Kloss in this video your very own website hey siri it's a weather like me Warmer than it is here. So, tomorrow I'm heading to New York and I haven't packed yet, but I'm not really worried because I'm really good at packing. I'm gonna make this video to show you how I, you know, travel like a pro because I travel all the time. I don't know if you're right. You can see I rearranged everything so I have enough space here to pack. I need to this really be one. I can touch myself. What are we traveling with? I like to just. So are you are you contouring? What's just happening? Sit in it and just kind of understand the mood of the clothes. It still smells a little stale. You want to make sure you have all of your. I'm not going to respond to her right now. As far as beauty products, I want to show you guys how I pack my carry on. I prefer to just do a carry on because I don't want to lose my luggage. Carry on to watch this so, whole thing. So beauty stuff. I love, I love the I carry stuff. Hand cream, some lip balm. Someone's filming this, you here, presumably. This is not... Oh yeah, someone's filming you. Some roll-on perfume. Very light makeup, BB cream. Okay, we don't watch the whole thing. But this is my favorite face. video. <laughs> All this stuff. Photoshop. Are they airplane? <laughs> I've like memorized the lines. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you watched this one a few times? <laughs> Camera in focus. Am I okay? So before I, you know, take off, I like to do a little bit of an airport trial okay. run. We don't have to watch this whole thing. <laughs> but that's so my favorite good. video to answer. So good. Um, do I use After Effects? No, I don't. I wish I knew how to use it a little bit better. Uh, wait, hold on. There's a couple more. Let's see. Let's go up. Oh, how do I look into transitions? Um... I just try to look at the action that's going and I try to make sure it follows up with something that makes sense. So right now the video I was working on um, from Austria, um, a lot of the transitions aren't making sense. The clips next to each other aren't making sense. So I definitely have to go through that and, you know, make it out. Jennifer wants to know if my viewers will finally get to see a hair tutorial. They haven't asked me for one for quite some time. Yeah. Is it okay that I'm talking this close to the You're mic? very close, but then, yeah. <laughs> um... Let's see. Yeah, you saw a Glossier bag. I'm so stoked that you know what that is. Someone's still telling me how to delete gaps. Um, thank you, Gabush. Gabosh. Um, blah, blah. Yeah, that we, I went through the rest. Okay, so okay, there's nothing. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I should do a hair tutorial, but you know, I have um, 
a get ready with me coming out. I have this cool thing. I'm redoing my blog and rebranding everything. So I have a video coming out on that. Um, and that highlights the premiere tutorial that I did. So definitely would check out the tutorial I did so you guys can enter that contest mm -hmm. and win a thousand dollars. I mean, yes. Yeah. Year of Creative Cloud and a one to one session as well. Yeah. But you know, um, actually, Jason gave me some really good transitions. So if we're talking like stylistic transitions, I really like those glitchy ones. So I'll show you guys this, which I'm very proud of. That's very loud. I'm so sorry. I blow out your no. eardrums. It's so good. No, you didn't. It's great. You should play it again. Kathleen is a big Glossier fan. That's very sweet. So this was so much fun to make yeah. um, just because Premiere has so many cool effects and being able to like throw them on every single clip and like keep layering and layering and layering. It was really fun. Yeah. Use blend modes here too, right? So many. Yeah. yeah. And I try to make this so it fits inside the Instagram square without actually making it a square clip. So in V9, I have like, I put my guards in so I can see like, uh, what the square box would look like. Um, and this was really cool to make because, like I said, like each of these things are so, so many. And all I did right now, so if I just zoom in here, should I, should I go through this process? Uh, sure, yeah, if you, by, by all means. I don't know if anyone wants to actually see it, but. I love these glitch transitions. What do they look like? They look like this. So I just took these and I put them between clips and I just like played with the blending mode and then, you know, had it in between all these. So, uh, Augustus, this probably took me like, actually I had so much fun making this that it didn't take me too long, but I would say like about two hours to make. Yeah. Um, what else? So yeah, that's all the glitch transitions. And then what's really cool is if you layer like the one thing that you wanna make look like a prism effect, you just take that and you just put it over multiple times. Like how you see like this right here is actually just, that's the glitch transition, the logo. So like, so you can make it smaller bigger but it really adds that effect and I also made it blurry and then in some of them I even changed like the the water or the coloring on it mm -hmm. and did you do some like left right position keyframing too to give it simulate the shake yeah yeah I didn't play with the keyframing as much as mm -hmm. manually doing it myself right. But right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 but you know it's fun I like it should we go back to well does anyone have any questions about that <laughs> the intro looks like the five nights at freddy's game over screen <laughs> what is that it's a popular game i oh. mean it's a it's a very like having the sort of glitch we were talking about that's why you asked me about this it's like a really kind of cool it's one of actually one of the mogerts that i've been showing that's the one i showed you mm -hmm. that glitchy transition it's it's just really it's like it's cool again yeah it's cool it's timely it looks great, and everybody adds their own flavor. That's my DJ. I told you that her the, the show logo, which you see at the end of the episode, mm -hmm. has glitch in yeah. the text. I I was watching her um, live stream, and it's really mm -hmm. cool how she actually plays very manually with a lot of like the shots. Like I like the oh, shots yeah. where she like punches in and like oh, has yeah. four of those. Yeah, well, that was that was today. In. Watching Simone do that today was crazy because that's stuff that yeah, I mean most people watching would say oh yeah after effects yeah and uh you know um that was all done in premiere yeah so good do i organize my tracks i don't even organize my thoughts so <laughs> i wouldn't say roland that i necessarily organize my tracks mm -hmm. too much but jason did teach me how to color code my mm -hmm. that's right which I, I'm you're, getting you're, better you're at. You're getting better at, yeah. <laughs>
No, no expressions in uh, in Premiere Mayor. You'd have to go to After Effects to do that. I mean, there are there are effects. Just to be clear, there are like wiggle type effects and things that you can you can use in Premiere. But no, no expressions. You have to go to After Effects for that. Let's go okay. back to the video I've been working yeah. on. Save changes, yes. So yeah, so are you, are we kind of, are you almost done with like the content in the sequence or are we still dropping clips in? I'm not dropping clips in, but I think, I mean, yeah. I think I'm just like trying to reorganize. Finessing the timing and organ. Yeah, it's just a little bit shots. harder because I feel like if you're working like, um, cause I think DW already had her whole timeline edited out, right? And she just like kind of talked through it. Oh yeah, yeah. That wasn't edited live today. That was, yeah. you were seeing the existing cut and then breaking it down. Yeah. This yeah. is your, you're building it from the ground up now. Yeah. So, sure. It's a process. And, but that's, I, I say you keep going with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just hard because like one, you're like rewatching right. the clip over and over again. And two, like, mm -hmm. it's a very quiet time. Like not yeah. necessarily like thinking out loud and right. talking. Right. So. I can feel the comments as they come in. And of course, as Evil Cerise points out, yes, you can, of course, dynamic link from AE uh, into Premiere and vice versa, just not simultaneously. It's bi-directional, but only one direction at a time. Um, but if you need to use expressions or some kind of animation-based expression on a, on a shot, um, you can do it in After Effects drag it into Premiere via dynamic link and if you've done a preview in After Effects so you've cached the frames it'll play real time in Premiere um, which is really nice that too though going back to like system specs and things that's when you really want to have um, just as much as much power uh, uh, and, and RAM on your system as possible <coughs> dynamic linking is leaner than it used to be but um, there is a bit of overhead. Is the contest open to all country wise? Ah, that's a good question, Juan Pablo. Um, I think quite a lot of countries, but it's there's right. It's not. It's not all. Um, there are some limitations, and we're back up here, so I can take this off screen. Um, here, let me see if I can find specifically which ones it is for you. Bear with me for a second here. for sure. God, my machine is freaking out. Okay. Um. Okay. So, to answer your question, Juan Pablo, the 50 United States, District of Columbia, Germany, France, South Korea, United Kingdom, Ireland, Canada, excluding Quebec, interesting, Netherlands, New Zealand, and Austria. Not Austria. Sorry, Australia. Did oh, I say Austria? Austria? You did say Austria. <laughs> it's your influence, Australia. So, um, yeah, it's not everywhere. What program do I like working with the most, Rachel? Well, William, I would have to say Premiere, although, yeah, Premiere. Um, I do like, oh, I like Bridge a lot if I'm working with photos. Really? Yeah. Wow, okay. Interesting. Well, I guess, like, Lightroom was, like, the new bridge where it's like it does everything that bridge yeah yeah did. no but you're you're not alone i mean there are a lot of people who still actually like working in, in bridge yeah i'm just i'm shocked you're among them because that's kind of it's just it's it's it it's it's a little dated it yeah. is yeah yeah 
It just because they haven't updated Bridge in a while, right? I mean, it's ha- it's had periodic updates, so it's updated to like a twenty seventeen or twenty fifteen dot whatever version. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. yeah, so it is updated, but right, it's not changed significantly yeah. in, a, in a long time. So. I think I like the very nineties look. At least mine looks very old it, and dated. No, it looks yeah. I mean, you see, I still have it in the in the toolbar down here. It's yeah. Still, oh yeah, and it is. It's twenty seventeen, so it is. Like I said, it's oh. it is. It's constantly Maybe updated, but one. it's just not. There's no like feature wise for you. It's it's nothing new that you're gonna. No, I just because like I'm bridge. so yeah. bad at f- organizing. So it's like the one thing that helps me organize my files. Just a little I'll bit. tell you the one thing I I actually. I don't do it too often, but the one thing I do like in Bridge, um, it does have great batching tools. So like batch renaming, mm-hmm. um, this stuff is great. Batch photo merging, which again, now you can you can do that just as easy. But I do um, a lot of scan vinyl scanning oh, yeah. of covers. Uh-huh. And the same scanner that I do my film scans on, it's not big enough to do vinyl in one piece. So oh. I have to do it actually in four pieces. Oh, and that's what batching does. Well, And then I can, well, so I can, photo merge a whole batch of them simultaneously and it'll correct it'll connect all the pieces together oh. and i actually do that via bridge oh well yeah. there you go so do you ever use um the mac app automator oh yeah sure that one works really well yeah and too, of course you can do, do that, that indirectly in photoshop too so yeah. oh yeah mm-hmm. you can i forget yeah. that all right ah uh, one problem i'm very sorry about that Always missing out on Pablo. Sorry. I like that shot too. I still can't get over that's you holding the camera. The shining. I really like that one shot to be quite long, so mm-hmm. it's going to have to render a little bit longer. Try and get it to line up with the... Oh, great. Click Analyze. Yeah, so again, you don't have to stabilize it right now. I mean, that's just telling you because you, oh. you change the duration of the clip, it has to reanalyze Even for stabilization. Now, yeah. So, yeah. so homogenous that a singular screen becomes an estranged mirror to see everything at once. With these kinds of challenges, it's becoming harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self and aspirations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to play that clip while it works. <laughs> I know, it really was just like... Yeah, it's wild. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You, the way it's framed especially, um, <laughs> You, you just couldn't tell. I was I was sure you were doing something else, or you had it mounted some way. Really cool. Harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self and aspiration. Do you like how? Do you like it going from that one window shot uh-huh. to another window where, shot? Where your or your friend sitting in the seat? It. I, I feel don't like, like that it shot. needs. I feel like two of them, it it feels like too much. Yeah. What clip would look good after that? Let's see. What am I talking about? I'm talking about... I prefer I prefer the one of you walking into the frame like that, but there's like some motion. Let's see. Let's try this. Let's move these down. Thanks, Juan. Hopefully soon. Does the action happen?
difficult to overcome. Step outside of your box and let... Step outside of your box and let nature cleanse the soul. Am I boring? This is editing. I know. I and think it's boring. Kind of boring. Yeah. I mean, that's editing. There's no, there's no way to gloss over it. You're making selections. You're making decisions. I mean, no. I think it's interesting because we're, we're seeing how it's evolving, right? Give yourself that immediate mental restart that you so deserve. You know what we get there is the pool shot. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like this shot too. Oh, and this shot. And there's the scrunchie. There's the scrunchie. <laughs> Chat is quiet right yeah. now. Well, it's because you guys are all watching me like super hyper focused right now. Right. Oh, we got 30 minutes left. Wow. <laughs> that always is so fast. Yeah. What about the shortcut commands she's using? What, what shortcut commands? What am I doing? I wish I knew more. I need to get that like one keyboard thing. Yeah, Paul, what's the overlay? The, the soft overlays, keyboard overlays that you use, the brand, you you had them for ages. The like the keyboard, you know, the keyboard shortcut. Yeah, KB covers. This is like kbcovers.com. Is that there? Okay, there's your. There's my answer. There's your answer, Rich. That is so nice. Who is Evil Cerise? Yes, he's our, our mod. Nature cleanses the soul. Give yourself that immediate mental restart button you so deserve. Yay! I like that transition. And you know what? Just so it doesn't feel so dead between these spaces, I'm going to turn up the music here too. And there it is right there, this. Rachel. Premiere Pro Keyboard Cover, twenty nine ninety five. That's awesome. That's your. That's your. Oh, that's the Touch Bar one. But that's that's your machine right there. Oopsies. Yeah. Do you? Can you use the pen tool for anything else other than like um, tracking audio? Like, what else would you use it for? Um, opacity, time remapping. Oh. Any anything where you have a, an envelope, a rubber band in the, in the video track. So is it Speed mostly ramping. audio? No, no, no. So opacity. Oh, like you just said. Something. Right. Um, so speed ramping. Uh huh. And then you can also do beziers. So you click points and you can pull the points out and curve them as opposed to making them. What? Line. Wow. You don't you don't use speed ramps ever? Um, not, so not a ramp of it. Right. I'll, just I'll like just like speed, speed up the clip. Yeah. So yeah. It's, so it's the same thing. So you can enable in here. Have mm -hmm. you ever tried it before? No, let's do it. Okay, I'll just show you. I mean, not that you do it on this <laughs> necessarily, but. Um. What's the cat song? Cat song. So, oh, sorry. So. I wasn't paying attention to it. Yeah, so doing. all of these, I mean, you could theoretically. Oh, did you just pen tool that and then right click the keyframe note? Yeah, well, I'm clicking the effects badge right here. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, so all of these things opacity and then speed ramp. So if you choose speed, mm -hmm. and you get this little line right there. Mm. Right? And when you choose your points, so let's say you're going to like, you want to ramp this section to this section. Mm -hmm. And then you see you can pull these apart. And now you can. This becomes a bezier handle, so like, whoops. So, <clears throat> if we adjust, let's make this say faster. Oh wow. Or slower. Oh wow. Right, and then here, if you click on these handles, uh -huh. you can again make do like a little, add that little curve. Yeah. Like a little like nice little transition. Exactly, so that it like ramps in, and then here it would just be like an abrupt change in speed, but again, you can pull these apart. Whoa. And adjust that, how long that ramp duration Let's lasts. see what that looks like. 
there. It's probably not too significant right there because there's not a lot of... Give yourself an immediate mental restart button. Oh, yeah. So deserve. Yeah. Through foreign environmental sensory experience. And again, that's like... So here's where I would also say... Because um, that's obviously on frame sampling. Yeah, what's just the... Mm -hmm. Not good. Oh, then you can do... Like, Optical flow. Yeah. Might be better. Uh, blending might be okay. Let's see. Because it's, it's like a... Again, it's like overlaying the frames mm -hmm. as opposed to the stuttery version. Give yourself an immediate mental restart button you so deserve. Yeah. Through foreign environments. So it's not so, it just, experience. it looks. Yeah. yeah it's so how do great. we undo everything? All right, let's just try optical flow just to see if it if it works on this. See, the nice thing is because it's kind of locked down, it might it might be okay. Give yourself an immediate mental restart button you so deserve. Oh, and deserve. you need to render this Through anyway to really appreciate it. But um, Let me just do that all the way. And then back to normal. Nice normal. Give yourself an immediate mental restart button. You I know a good clip for that. I don't even know why I haven't thought about it yet. Let's just move this on down. So I went paragliding there, <laughs> and that was so amazing. Oh, we haven't seen any of that footage. I know, huh? I'll put it in right now. Cause that really fits in with mm -hmm. um, what I was saying. By the way, no need for the pen tool. Hold down command, click on the rubber band to create KFs. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was doing there. So oh, I, I don't see. actually, I actually never even go to the pen tool, but uh, the pen tool now has more functionality anyway. But uh, and you can do the same for the audio keyframes too. You just hold down so because I usually keep it on the pointer V, uh -huh. right, the move tool. So if you hold command, it'll turn into a pen. Oh. Yeah. Kind of nice. Okay. Yes. Unlink. Delete that. See, I thought I was going to go with more of like, um, like playing with the audio of like the clips itself, but mm -hmm. I think with the voiceover and the music, it's suddenly just becoming using just the video clips only. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think if there's good environmental sound, like I could see in the opening scene where you have the plane, mm -hmm. like you could use like a jet engine kind of, like not a takeoff sound because you're already in the air. But but like that hum. Yeah, or something kind of fade in, fade out a little. Could be effective. And that's where you would dip into something like our sound effects libraries and yeah. find something that works. Give yourself that immediate mental restart button you so deserve through foreign. Oh my god, what? <laughs> oh yeah, then the cowbells. Oh, this is a great shot, too. So that's me up there. I went paragliding. This is going to be. Actually, I just want to do clip only. <laughs> And then off we go. Look at this. Yeah, it's a great clip. Not a good sound choice. Nope. How do I not? Oh, you know what I want to know is how do I, um, as I'm scrubbing through in the source panel, mm -hmm. is there a way that I can watch the clip and see the wavelength or like the sound? Because I know I can do this, but mm -hmm. I like to see it both together. Oh, uh, no, because you're, you're either looking at composite or audio oh. in the source. So you can't, like, ever see it together, kind of like how you can see it right here. No. Oh, it's a bummer. Um, well, no, let me think. If you get, can you gang source and program? You can gang the source and program monitors. And switch the views. Hmm. That that maybe could work. Oh, here's some questions. Um, Laurie wants to know that this doesn't relate to editing, but how do I find these cool places to I visit? The spa right. in south of France. Right. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you. Um, let's see. Kind of by luck. I uh, I think having like friends that travel a lot too, they get approached by. Um, like hotels and like places that kind of 
So you just, yeah, so you gang the views together. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That's I'll cool. That. That's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so this, this spot I went to is with this beauty brand that I work with. Um, her brand is Suzanne Kaufman, and I've been using her stuff. And when I met Suzanne, she told me that she had a spa out in Bazao in Austria. So I wanted to visit her. And then the hotel in the south of France, they just remodeled. So they like were reaching out to a bunch of influencers to which um, they asked me if I wanted to come. And I went there Mm -hmm. and that was really cool. But yeah, I'm just like always looking for a new place to go. I mean, Jason has been to amazing places. So Mm. I'm kind of picking his brain too. I'm like, where to go next? (laughs) Choice places. So here, you, you took the audio out, but as I, as I said before, I even tried it. So you can you can gang the two monitors together. Mm-hmm. So do you have any more clips that have the camera audio that you didn't remove in the timeline? Just mm. we can find one somewhere. Well, I was thinking like when I'm scrubbing through footage like this. Yeah, no, it has to be. So again, we're ganging the program and the source. That's how it makes oh, sure it. So, yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. It's like a little hack. I got mm-hmm. it. Hmm. No. Do I get paid to travel? Sometimes I get paid to travel. Wow, this is a cool shot. <laughs> I was going to ask, was there someone like strapped behind you while you were doing this? Yeah, I was yeah. definitely in tandem with somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that clip, all I had was a my little point of shoot, the same mm-hmm. one that I used like during my facial. And um, yeah, I just had it strapped onto myself. I don't know if you can see like this little thing right here. That's actually my camera strap. So I had it buckled down to like my little backpack thing. So I got to make sure I did not lose it. You didn't lose it, right. But I was bold enough to even take my iPhone out too and just like oh, wow. nice. making sure I held on to it with dear life and mm-hmm. was able to record the surroundings. Yeah, that's cool. Let's see how this is going. Give yourself that immediate mental restart button you so deserve through a foreign environmental sensory experience. Turn off your data and be present, allowing the only viewable screen to be the HD. Dude, that's great. And it works for the voice over there, too. Yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. That's another one of those moments you were talking about yesterday. You just, it just worked. It know. just worked. But then now I want to see, like, the, the HD screen. What's a good clip for that? Oh, have I gone through that clip of... No, I haven't. So this is a good time. Let me move this clip back. Do you have any just shots without your feet or, f- <coughs> like, of the skyline or anything? Oh, I do. I was pretending to be a human drone. Mm-hmm. That's kind of your HD screen, right? I mean. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, here it is. Me being an HD drone. Sorry, let's not listen to that. That looks pretty dang good. Just drop that in. Oh, wait. And I'd probably say Evil Cerise for something like that, if it made sense with the music. I mean, you could, again, you could add some, some nice kind of wind if you wanted to kind of emphasize, you know. The... The, like the visceral sound. Right, the environment, yeah. <laughs> Ground view. Observe. And the only viewable screen to be the HD window to the world around you. Let me cut that there and then. Move this down. Ground view. Observe. Acknowledge. Digest. Alright, so we've got uh, approximately 12 Ground more view. minutes. Observe, acknowledge, digest. However, now is the plan to have this finished tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. I know. No. Should I have been done with it today already? No, 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 no. So I'm saying, like tomorrow, maybe we'll, um, will we do some like, oh, uh, like post work on correction. Some color. Yeah, yeah. All the, all the post stuff. Yeah. Has anyone tweeted at us? Yeah, because what are what's um, what are you guys talking about with DW tomorrow? Um, what are we talking about tomorrow? Because she already did her edit. Yeah, well, we've been breaking down different scenes and different techniques. So today was oh. was um, 
all about like again in in app tricks for creating all of the um, uh, two up side by sides like multi screen looking kind of shots and uh, it was all about timing and pacing against the music. Yeah, that's a huge part too. Um, I already forget. I forget what we said we we're gonna do tomorrow, but yeah. However, let's move that to however. However, yeah, remember nice. not to absorb badness so naively that much of our commercialistic living is a forced connection. You know, it's been really, really nice to be in Adobe property and being around tech because um, I just feel like I'm always around like fashion people and doing stuff mm. like that, that like, it's honestly been so refreshing. It makes me want to work in tech. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it's just like change of environment, right? I think, I think you probably get that from both sides, right? I mean, sometimes it's nice to, um, I know <clears throat> periodically I'll, uh, like I have some friends who don't do anything, nothing computer software related, nothing, mm -hmm. you know, music related, like, you know, mm, financial planners or something, uh -huh. right? And it's just, it's a different conversation. It's a different, I mean, we have maybe similar likes, similar this and that, but it's, right, there's just a different energy when that's yeah. brought together. And it's kind of nice to step out and be like, oh, you're not going to ask me. Yeah, that's true. It's yeah. just like I think, I th a change I think, of scene. Yeah, I think it's a good change of scene. It's a forced connection. Instead, emphasize your opinions. Overwhelm yourself with a heightened empowerment. And remember, there's a difference between... See, I'll tell you, as I'm looking at this, mm -hmm. I see great opportunity in some of these shots to use some of those light leak transitions that we were talking about. Oh. Mm. Maybe we can throw that in tomorrow. Yeah. Or maybe you start putting some in tonight to see if you like it at all, if it works. And yeah, then, Yeah, true. augment some of the other Wait, shots. Wait, what did someone say? How do I delete those, those boxes again? Is it command function delete? Well, this ripple, they won't let me delete this ripple. Yeah, no, because there's there's nothing there. That's it. Oh, I see. But there is a, is it a menu item to eliminate okay. the gaps in the sequence menu? Maybe just check there really fast. Go to gap. No, go, go to, to gap. gap. Oh, there's go to gap. Go to the gap. Oh, cool. <laughs> Ah, it's okay, whatever. Okay. I'm gonna scroll up and see if I can find it for you again. Renee's saying it's coming together so well. July is I still function shift delete. I think you just did that, right? Function shift delete. Function shift delete. Yeah, I did. But this one just won't let me delete in general. It has like it's grayed out, so I don't know. Um. Yeah, I uh, I don't use them as often now since we introduced um, <clears throat> Lumetri. Uh, but so I used to use Magic Bullet, like the suite, quite a lot. Um, I don't so much anymore. Um, I do, however, still use Misfire, which is actually this is some of the stuff I showed you, Rachel. So Misfire is Red Giant's plugin collection of scratches, um, splotches, oh, green. Mm -hmm. It's all these film effects that add dirt and, you know, weave, gate weave, Ooh. dust, fade. Um, those where are is this from? From Red Giant. Red Giant. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here, I can show you. Is quickly. that also where you get the, um, the music and stuff? Uh, oh, that was a different thing you were talking about. Yeah, right? that was something different, yeah. And um, I will occasionally sometimes still use Colorista um, in After Effects and of course Trap Code Shine which Red Giant now um, uh, distributes and in fact Andrew was talking about this yesterday um, Trap Code Shine is uh, an all-time fave I don't use it too much because I'm not really doing a lot of text and title things um, but uh, I, lo I love those and they just, they just make great stuff 
I never went like the un I tested out Universal, but I never wound up um, really using it. Okay, should we play this through? See what we got? And then I'll actually finish this one tonight. <laughs> Let's do it. It's just a file import failure. What? My, my machine's freaking out now. <laughs> All right, let's watch your. Let's watch it. Let's take a look. Okay. Let's have it in full, hopefully. Okay. Oh yeah, we have ten minutes left. Dear individuality, I've watched you struggle, thrive, embrace rebelled throughout all the years. From awkward pubescent years to navigating the transition into adulthood, you've never stopped leaping through adversity and overcoming internal confrontation. Even more now, our world has become so homogenous that a singular screen becomes an estranged mirror to see everything at once. With these kinds of challenges, it's becoming harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self. Oh, wait. I feel like every time it goes through that clip, it like doesn't work. Here, why don't you do this? Why don't you just disable so it's not even trying, you know, it's oh, not I giving see. you the um, analysis warning, and then it'll just play real time on everything else. So yeah, just, just turn it off right there. Oh, okay, yeah. perfect. So it'll be wobbly, but that's fine. You, you're still, you know, this is not your locked off shot. Right? Years ...to navigating the transition into adulthood, you've never stopped leaping through adversity and overcoming internal confrontation. Even more now, our world has become so homogenous that a singular screen becomes an estranged mirror to see everything at once. With these kinds of challenges, it's becoming harder and harder to hang on to your sense of self and aspirations. If for a moment you lose your tracking, it's okay. It's normal. But I want to remind you, it's not impossible to overcome. Step outside of your box and let nature cleanse the soul. Give yourself that immediate mental restart button you so deserve through a foreign environmental sensory experience. Turn off your data and be present, allowing the only viewable screen to be the HD window to the world around you. Observe, acknowledge, digest. However, remember not to absorb vapidness so naively that much of our commercialistic living is a forced connection. Instead, emphasize your opinions. Overwhelm yourself with a heightened empowerment. And remember, there's a difference between settling down and keeping the door open. And whatever the case is, when confronted by a version of yourself, do not allow yourself to manifest a guilt that you aren't good enough. And that's where we left off. That's where we left off. Okay. And I should have this finished tomorrow. Okay. No, wait, what happened to the swimming shots? Didn't you put some, are those? Oh, they, they weren't working. They didn't really make the cut? Not yet. I okay. still have them. They're still, okay, I see, you just move them down. Okay, yeah. I mean, you gotta use some of these. They look so cool. Yeah. Oh, I will. Yeah. I was just waiting for it to like make sense in mm -hmm. that in the dialogue. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So far. So far. It looks all right, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it looks fantastic. So, um, all right. So yeah, we've got a minute and a half here to go. We. So oh thank gosh. you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you so much for joining oh us this afternoon. That was a great second day. I felt a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. I wasn't as nervous. <laughs> totally. Totally. And uh, let's see what just happened. The Da Vinci um, mm -hmm. color corrector. Isn't that the one that looks like a turntable? Da Vinci Resolve. Well, yes, it's the color wheels, which we have. You know, we have color wheels in Lumetri, but Da Vinci Resolve is yes, a dedicated. Well, it does many things now. Actually, it's they are, they do editing and stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, and tomorrow, well, maybe I'll show you too. If again, oh, we'll work with maybe some of the light leak transitions tomorrow. Oh yeah, we'll definitely. And I think tomorrow's focus on like stylizing. Stylizing, post finishing. Yeah. Uploading, if we're brave. Uploading. 
Oh, yeah. We'll yeah. <laughs> I can do that, too. Technically, theoretically, we could. All right, everyone. We've got uh, 20 seconds, so any any last words? Uh, you know what? Check out that contest. That's right. Hashtag make it impactful. And, yes. And uh, your chance to win a year of Creative Cloud, a thousand bucks. And... Uh, one rack. And, and uh, one-to-one with Rachel or Julesy. So be sure to tune in tomorrow at 9 a.m. right here on adobelive.com for day three, beginning with Mount Mograph. And we will hope to see you then. So have a great evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.